again, it's time for another VertZine netcast. VertZine is, of course, the online magazine of virtualization and cloud computing. And I want to welcome you to the VertZine netcast. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com, if it's tech. It's right here on the VertZine netcast. We're going to get into some things this week, uh, just, just a few items I want to talk about. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a Vert Z netcast, and I apologize for that, but there's just been a whole lot of stuff going on, so we're doing the best we can. <laughs> All right, first item we want to talk about is an item from um, VMworld, which took place early this month in September. September the 2nd, this was announced. Uh, Improvada and Teradici will simplify logins for virtualized clients, particularly in hospitals. Now, I work at a hospital, local hospital here, in High Point, North Carolina, which is the High Point Regional Health System. And we are currently looking at VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. Now, this is mainly for our um, clinical workstations that will be out there, but there's going to be about 800 of them. And really, the, the you know, you do what you can with what you got, obviously, but the ultimate goal will be to one day have zero client terminals meaning they won't be running Windows, they won't be running Linux, they won't be running any operating system. They will simply boot off of a special EEPROM uh, and go directly into the VMware View client. Now the problem with that particular uh, configuration is that if you're using something like Improvada to do single sign-on, which I encourage you to look at Improvada if you're looking for a single sign-on te uh, solution, technical solution. Awesome product, and it has a whole lot of features and, and can do a whole lot with it. I, I've been really impressed with it. We did a proof of concept with uh, Varo, uh, a local tech consulting group, and I tell you what, it was really impressive to see what Improvada could do with VMware's view together. But the big announcement that Improvada and Teradici did was to announce that in the Teradici EEPROM firmware, they're going to actually build the Improvada client directly into the firmware so that when the zero client boots, so to speak, comes up, the uh, Improvada software will be there to allow the single sign-on to work. And of course, they're aiming it specifically at zero client hospital systems, which is exactly what we're dealing with. So I was really excited about this. It says, later this year, doctors will be able to use an authentication badge that incorporates Teradici's zero client firmware, Improvada's one sign authentication technology, and VMware's new backend View 5 software to roam from one virtualized desktop to another. So they'll badge in, they'll use it, and then they'll move on to another workstation, badge in there, and their, their session will follow them to the new device. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I've seen it in action, now not this particular combination of Improvada and Teradici on a zero client, but I've seen it in action on a PC client, and it really is impressive to see how that works. So uh, I'm looking forward to this actually being out in the real world, uh, but they did announce it officially at VMworld. So good stuff. Now, next thing I want to talk about is the BitCasa Beta. This is a, a brand new startup company that um, was in a basically a contest uh, for startups and they placed, I think I want to say about third, it's either sixth or third, I don't remember, but very high uh, placement in this particular contest. And the idea of BitCasa is, or BitCasa, depending on how you want to pronounce it, as the name implies, Casa is Spanish for house, bit, so you got bit house is kind of the, you know, unofficial uh, definition, if you want to call it that. But anyway, totally infinite storage. Think about this. This technology, which by the way is patented, will make a cloud-based storage system look like a local storage uh, directory or drive on your computer, but all your files will actually be available in the cloud. Now talk about, you know, Neat. I mean, this this would be awesome because you think about it. You can have a PC here at home, where I'm sitting here in my office. I can go to work. I can have the same data available right there. I can have it available on my uh, uh, G tablet, which you know my ViewSonic G tablet. I can have it available on my phone. 
I mean, yeah, they're going to have clients that's going to make this data available basically almost ubiquitously. So it's really going to be neat. So I'm looking forward to that. And I went ahead and signed up for their early beta. Now, ultimately, it's going to cost $10 a month, but that $10 a month will be for infinite storage. Now, again, think about that. No limits, no caps, infinite storage. So I went ahead and signed up for the early beta, and I am looking forward to that. I really hope it takes off because it sounds like a really great uh, innovation. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, next and, and last item for this week is Microsoft's cloudy days. This is what I called it, kind of tongue-in-cheek here, because Microsoft has had a lot of problems with their services recently. The Microsoft Cloud services, a lot of them have gone down. That includes Hotmail, Office 365, SkyDrive, mainly in Europe and Asia. They got the brunt of the outages, but they were also seen in North America as well. So, um, after they kind of went quiet for a while about it, they finally came clean and said that there was actually a problem and explained what the problem was. They were down for about three hours, which, you know, in the cloud computing world, that's forever. Can you imagine if you were getting all of your business email and your business storage and all that off of a service and it was down for three hours during the day? Whew, that's rough. So Microsoft having some issues there. And uh, again, these, these cloud storages, they're going to have to get, like I was talking about BitCasa, you know, that's going to have to be high, high uptime. 99.99999% or people aren't going to use it. If you can't get to your data when you need it, you're just not going to put up with it if you're like me. So come on, folks. We need to get this technology down to the point that it is bulletproof. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a, a bit of a short netcast. But I wanted to catch you up on some of these things. And remember, until next time, keep your head in the cloud.